My name is Sandy Klaas. Uh, I'm the lead user researcher at VRT, and uh, VRT is the um, Belgium, Belgian public broadcaster, actually of the, uh, the Flanders region in Belgium. I prepared this presentation together with uh, Rick Bowens, who is my colleague and is the lead developer. And uh, we actually work quite close to, uh, together to design and develop media consumption experiences and media production tools in our projects. Um, so we work at the research and development department of uh, the public broadcaster and we do uh, or we design a lot of prototypes. And today I will talk about uh, a prototype we created um, that uh, yeah, actually is a radio production tool that f is fit for listener interaction. And we did this in the context of a European project, which is called Marconi. Um, that had the aim to bring listeners closer together, to bring radio stations and listeners closer together. So to increase, increase listener engagement. Um, what that actually meant, we did not know at the beginning of the project, and I will talk about how we came about this. Um, just to give you an idea, who are the par well, partners in this project? Because it's a European project, uh, a lot of European located partners are also present, uh, and they all play a role in this project. It's not like that this is an isolated experiment only from VRT, uh, it's really like a collaborative effort. So we have ourselves, but we also have uh, NPO, which is the Dutch public broadcaster, uh, University of Hasselt and University of uh, Vienna um, um, is a legal department and computer science department. And we have Joanne Marie, oh, going, shaking also uh, moves the uh, slides. Um, so I'll just point with my hand. Um, Joannem Research is a knowledge institution that focuses on multimedia analysis, affection, and into two smaller companies, one focusing on chatbots, interactions into social media, and Pluxbox is the main integrator in the, in the project of this, uh, of this platform. So I'll talk about the idea of a modular radio tool, and also uh, how we achieve this. So I'm a user researcher. I will also talk a lot about uh, the concept that Becky referred to earlier. So I'm quite happy for this introduction. Um, so you will uh, uh, also recognize some lessons from her. Um, but to give you a little bit of more idea what VRT is, again. <laughs> VRT has includes 11 brands, of which three TV stations and three online channels. And we have five radio stations. Um, radio 1, Radio 2, and Clara are more general radio stations. And Studio Brussels and Eminem. Those two focus at youth. I will mostly refer to those two because we do a lot of experiments with them. So. But first, um, I guess I'm at a radio conference, but uh, what is one of the most important aspects of radio? Uh, that it is live. It is 24-7 uh, in our case. It's a, a live production. And we at VRT believe that is really like the, the strength of radio. In, <laughs> I don't know how it's in U the UK, but in Belgium, radio, is, uh, radio consumption is relatively stable. TV consumption is in decline, but uh, radio is still quite popular also at, at youth, um, for youth. Um, but of course, production has changed. Um, the fact that it's live creates ex uh, expectations amongst listeners. It creates the expectation that when they send a message, when they send responses, that they get an answer immediately, that it gets processed immediately. And in that sense, um, Listeners are more, more, more spoiled today, so they, have, they know uh, chat applications where you, have, you talk to uh, um, an online, online shop and you get an immediately, immediate response. So they expect that also from their radio station. Interaction got more personal. And our radio brands, especially the ones aiming at youth, here you see Studio Brussels, um, they come closer, literally, to their audience. 
making more direct connections with their audience, interacting in a more personal way. And it's not only um, the more two-way communication they expect, it's also the fact that they now send mes um, messages that contain audiovisual images like photos and videos. So they expect us, radio stations, to do something with that material. Okay, so what I just mentioned, that was something we knew at the beginning of this European project. That was something we knew by talking to our radio strategist, uh, by talking by the radio strategist of, of NPO and so on, also with the technical partners in the consortium. But we did not know what it actually meant um, on a daily basis for our radio producers. So we started by doing observations in those studios, uh, listening, doing interviews, listening uh, what their daily struggles were, observing how they tackled things uh, during live shows, uh, tackled things in terms of uh, responding to listeners and so on, of course. So we saw on the right side, you see the editor, the main editor of the evening show of Studio Brussels. Uh, he's the most important guy at the time, uh, besides the radio host on the other side of the glass. Um, the editor uh, struggles, or he has a lot of things to do. He has a lot of, uh, he has to keep an eye on the rundown. He has to keep an eye of all the incoming messages of, of listeners. What we also notice is that the presenter of the next show also is present. Uh, she also keeps an eye of all the incoming messages just to connect her show, which, which, is, which follows this show, um, to connect potential interesting uh, responses for her show. And then there's a web editor. He takes care of all the social media stuff, and he also looks at all the incoming messages and, uh, to search for interesting opportunities to make stories that he can create a meme about or um, yeah, send a, a tweet or about or respond to a tweet. So actually, there were a lot of parties involved that we were not aware of, aware of in the beginning. And also, the biggest observations we made is that there were a lot of touch points, a lot of different screens uh, those producers needed to use. Um, a lot of different screens, a lot of different systems, different ways of working, creating content with different, um, in different interfaces. And to, um, to sum up, we saw that our producers lost overview of um, how to interact with listeners. So they, uh, they lost overview of all the uh, interfaces they had to, to learn uh, to, to deal with it. So the first lesson I want to share is <laughs> understand your users. Or, yeah. Uh, <laughs> know who you design for. Uh, like I said in the beginning, we had no idea um, what the actual problem was. By going to our radio production floor, uh, we learned their da daily struggles. And we also created a lot of buy-in from them. Uh, buy-in to test our prototypes, which we would made, make in a later phase. But we created the buy-in just to go over uh, in a later phase, talk to them, uh, get their response or their uh, reaction on a prototype. Um, it was much easier, the process that came after, because of the fact that we already listened to them. We also um, used those problems um, as a starting point to do co-creation workshops. So we co-created solutions for their problems together with the radio production teams, together with radio hosts, um, listeners, and the technical staff. Um, um, one of those solutions is, well, what I wanted to present, is the modular platform. So the idea is that not every radio station has the same need. We have at VRT a large radio stations, uh, mostly large radio stations, um, that create content 24-7. Not every radio station has this need. 
Um, but also not every radio presenter. We saw radio presenters that only responded to emails or only received emails, for instance. So we envisioned a modular tool uh, that could be yeah, plug and playable for uh, the needs of each uh, radio station. This is the uh, more schematic view of our prototype. So um, I'll dive into a bit, uh, a bit deeper now. Uh, on the left side, you see the rundown of the show. We use Radio Manager at VRT. So you see um, the rundown of Studio Brussels. And on the right side, you see the more elaborate view on that rundown. But we not, only, not always use this space. So we created that, we, we made place um, for uh, incoming messages um, on that uh, more detailed view. So uh, we emptied the space, added lanes where all those incoming messages could be shown. That's, that's here. And the two lanes aside, they show uh, more filtered content. For instance, all the messages that came in that contained the word or the hashtag MNM and it was one, one of our stations, uh, get filtered in the middle. All the messages that come in that respond to a particular contest get filtered to the right. So a DJ has a, immediately a clear view um, of, of the incoming messages and to create a, a story with that. To give you a, a more high level view of uh, how this functions, so um, of course, we have the listener. In our case at VRT, he has a dedicated chat application in the app of our radio station. So Studio Brussels has his own application which contains a chatbot. The editorial team has the other side of that chat uh, application, the messenger uh, application. It also has a search interface. I will talk about that in a minute as a second part uh, of this uh, prototype. And um, there's an admin panel for, uh, for the, more like the, the privacy issues to control uh, the profiles of the listeners. In the middle, you have the Plugsbox engine where all the services, sorry, the services tie into. So the service of the uh, chatbots, um, uh, yeah, the chatbot service, social media service, and an image analysis service uh, to, um, yeah, to analyze all those incoming photos and videos. Now, the second lesson I want to take is that um, we started small. So we did not start with that high-level le architecture. No, we did small, isolated experiments, of which one of the uh, was the uh, search bar. Uh, actually, we worked quite long on this feature. Um, it looks very simple. It looks like a search bar for the incoming messages. Um, but it's, on a technical level, quite difficult. So to give you an idea, we first started with a search bar and a, a whole list of checkboxes and filters for the DJs to, um, to search all the messages. Um, but they did not use it. So we gave, give this prototype to them, use, let them use it in well, in preparation of their show, but we saw that they didn't use it. So we found out why, and it was because the checkboxes was too complex, and in the end, they just wanted a Google bar that looks very simple. Uh, it took some months to, to create this, um, and it includes like uh, <laughs> technical stuff like uh, fuzzy search, synonym matching, autocomplete. So it's, it's a very simple UI, but it has a difficult uh, backend. And like I said, um, we do a lot of testing um, at our radio production floor. I mean, we not, we're not testing it in a, uh, in a lab setting. We're testing it in the actual, during the actual radio show, even not only in preparation, but also during the actual show. Oh. And I just wanted to give an anecdote about Sen, who is one of the radio DJs of m, &M. Um, and uh, he was involved in our latest prototype, and he was uh, 
he was quite surprised that uh, it was so easy actually to make changes. He, um, he was quite surprised that uh, technology could be so flexible. He was not aware. He was already working for three years and had all kinds of workarounds using pen and paper to prepare um, or to, to, to spot interesting uh, listener comments and uh, use them in his show while he could just copy paste it. And that's my third lesson I want to share is uh, so do not test in a lab setting. Um, we believe at VRC that testing um, on the actual floor is really valuable because you get the real responses of those people. You don't get a social desirable answer. Um, you get how they would use it. So you get a real insight. And to give you an idea of how this prototype I presented, oh, I'm really bad at this pointer, yeah. <laughs> um, so to give you an idea how it looks like, I, I, before I presented the schematic overview, this is how it looks like implemented in the uh, actual uh, M&M uh, rundown software. Um, so on the left you see the rundown, well, second to the left. <laughs> And next to it, you have the, uh, the tab that contains the incoming listener messages. So it's branded like the radio station. M&M it was. But we also uh, tried it out at other radio stations. Here it's been used at Clara. That is um, our uh, radio station aiming, uh, well, it, it presents classic music. It's classical music. And they have a way different uh, type of interacting with listeners. It's mostly long messages and, and um, uh, not that many than in a, a youth uh, radio station. So it was interesting to see here there were different needs and we could again iterate upon our prototype. So in the beginning of the project, we started with this. Uh, so no. It goes really too quick. Ah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so that's all my lessons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not moving it at all. <laughs> um, yeah, well, um, the idea is that in, uh, so we still have one a half a year ago uh, to do in the project. So the Marconi project still lasts for about six months. Um, and the idea is to also incorporate the social uh, media parts in uh, the rundown system. So now we only focused on more personal ways of interacting with a listener. And the idea is to also to integrate uh, socials. And that's what we are focusing on. But we are also doing uh, open pilots. That means that uh, other radio stations can also uh, explore our tool. Um, so if you're interested, you can look at that <laughs> link and subscribe or get more uh, information or talk to me. Um, so yeah, that was it to conclude. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>